Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm Sam uh, Powell, a creative specialist with Google. Hey, I'm Paul Fennett, also a creative specialist here at Google. And we also have Hemi, you, you'll see uh, down in the bottom of the screen with the training team. She's helping uh, us put this all together. So again, thanks for joining. Uh, we're excited to talk to you all. Um, as we know, there's been some big shifts in the HTML5 uh, industry and in ad industry, and uh, the big one coming with Chrome starting to pause, uh, pause Flash. So that's been a big change, and we uh, we want to give you updates to the industry and uh, and also introduce this series, which we're doing. It'll be five sessions. Uh, this first one will be kind of updates on the industry, um, some tools, GWD updates, um, and, and to kind of give you an intro to how to handle the transition. Um, then we have some upcoming ones. There's going to be one on QA, how to actually QA your ads, all the tools we use, um, everything from scripts to Chrome developer tools, all those kind of things. Uh, the next one's going to be dynamic, how to connect our dynamic system uh, into your ads, how to from the code level all the way up through the studio feeds. Uh, we'll follow that up with advanced GWD. There's uh, been a lot of changes to that, and there's a lot of cool ads coming out, um, both on YouTube mastheads um, and just showing a lot of new creative capabilities. And then the last one's going to be hand-coded HTML5, so how to actually get in there under the hood and really um, make some cool creative changes. Uh, how to use GWD to do it, because it has a great code view feature, and then how to actually just do it by hand if you want to use any of the other tools out there. Uh, we also wanted to highlight we're going to have a live Q&A at the end of this. So on the side of uh, your Google Hangout, you can click Q&A. And so please ask questions, you know, update, um, upvote questions when you see ones you want answered. Uh, we'll take some time at the end to answer those. And we'll also at the end, uh, if we don't get to any, we'll put any, every answer in the Help Center. So there will be a nice online resource with all of those. Uh, and then one last note is we're going to have a feedback form at the end. Uh, we really uh, value everything you write into us, so please fill that out, and we'll present actually our deck to you. Uh, it's got a lot of tools, a lot of resources, um, links, and how to do things in HTML5. So uh, we found that that's a really great uh, resource for uh, people to have while they're making this transition. So then let's start our little presentation. All right, so HTML5 immersion days. Our agenda, we're going to touch base on why HTML5, how do we get here, uh, industry updates we really want to share with some of the things we've been doing as well as uh, what other people like IAB have been updating. Uh, we've got some product updates, tools, and resources. And then we're going to do a demo. Paul's going to run through uh, the GWD updates uh, and how to use them in your creatives. And then we're going to have a live Q&A. So moving along. HTML5, how do we get here? Uh, to start, we just wanted to touch base on what is HTML5. Uh, the industry has taken to calling this new technology. Uh, it kind of encapsulates a few different things. So we have HTML5, which is actually a markup language, JavaScript, and CSS. Uh, and, and as the ad industry as a whole, we've just been calling that all HTML5. Uh, technically, it's, it's, HTML5 is just a markup language. Um, so we just wanted to clarify that as we're moving forward. Uh, a big reason beyond Chrome is that devices have shifted to HTML5, right? We have um, all these different devices now, from phones to desktops to tablets to even game consoles. So HTML5 is becoming a way to communicate between all of these, whereas Flash was much more limited to desktop. So as we said, so mobile doesn't support it. Publishers are moving to HTML5. We've been working a lot with publishers to help make this shift. And educate them on the differences between Flash and HTML5, and we're starting to make some great uh, headway there. And then the big thing is browsers are, browsers are pausing Flash. Um, Safari started this. F uh, Firefox, as you can see, doesn't even come ship, doesn't, sorry, doesn't ship with Adobe Flash. Uh, and then Chrome, you'll already see that it has a warning, but you might also see that it's starting to pause it. So we wanted to communicate this out too. Um, because there's been some confusion. So Chrome is starting to roll out the update, the PPS update that is pausing Flash. It's not out to everyone, but the rollout has started. And uh, a reason that they do the rollout is so that they can test and make sure everything's working smoothly. Um, so you're going to start to see that um, and expect that to continue on. Um, and soon you know, it'll be a full rollout. Uh, one thing to note there, though, is that 
browsers like Internet Explorer still allow Flash. So you can still build things in Flash. It's just something we're not recommending because it has such a limited uh, penetration. So Chrome PPS, this is what you're going to see in the browser. Uh, it's just simply a setting. You can turn it off or on, um, but this is what will be start being turned on by default. So instead of seeing this, you know, a live uh, running ad that's in Flash, you'll see this, which is just a paused ad. What it does is it takes a random frame and uh, not a random, they have an algorithm for it, but uh, it pauses it. First good frame, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, the first good frame. Uh, so this obviously is not an ideal user experience. <laughs> um, so we want to really uh, encourage everyone to continue the switch to HTML5. So right now, uh, and browsers, sorry. 15% of browsers after Chrome has completed the rollout will, and that's that's across like Firefox, Safari, all of those ones that don't ship or pause or, or um, uh, block basically Flash from playing back uh, their content. Um, that's that 15%, uh, which is what basically like IE and a few other uh, modern browsers. And then we've been seeing Flash campaigns already have a 25% backup rate. So even if you are building things for other browsers like Internet Explorer, you're still going to have a really high backup rate. This is another reason why we're promoting eSmall 5. So half of it addicts inventory does not support Flash today. Just one more reason. Um, and then this is a number we really wanted to share. Uh, it's been a really great thing to see across the ad in industry that we're already at 75% of creatives developed in eSmall 5. And this is a massive shift and really, uh, Everyone who's worked on this should give themselves a lot of credit because this is a really this has been a difficult uh, shift in technology. It's a lot of new things to learn, uh, and in over only a few months, we've gone from about 15% of creatives in HTML5 to 75%. So this has been a massive, massive shift, uh, and uh, and so everyone should give themselves a pat on the back that have worked on this. Uh, and and what's allowed it is 96% of browsers uh, support HTML5. So we've seen that uh, that across the board now we really can do a lot with HTML5. The technology has come a long way, and you know modern browsers are all supporting it. So industry updates. Google Web Designer's updated to 1.4. Uh, we've had a lot of engineering work behind this. They've got some great new highlights, and Paul's going to run through these uh, in his demo. We've had a big push for mobile, uh, so we have full screen API support, uh, position based position, sorry, percent based positioning. Uh, component updates like tap to SMS uh, and components. For those of you who don't know, it's a nice uh, drag and drop feature where you can get a chunk of code that does various different functionality. Uh, and we're just trying to make it as easy as possible to add um, all the things you might have been able to do in Flash, but add it in HTML5 and in a very uh, user easy way. Uh, page events, uh, something like Tilt, where you can actually use the functionality of a phone. Um, to, uh, to interact with your ads, and then workflow updates. So GWD is a newer, uh, is a newer tool, uh, and so we've really been working hard to make it uh, fluid and seamless while you're working on the ads. And one thing to keep in mind, too, GWD, it has, well, it's a, you can build anything in it. It really has been focused on building ads, um, and so that's, that's a really nice feature. Uh, so one thing, we have swap images. You can swap in line and preserve animations in the timeline, uh, wrap multiple elements and break them apart, on the color panel, we've just been working to make that easier to use, so you have better color selection, you can save swatches. And then a big part of GWT is, is in helping this transition, we've created new templates, and a lot of them are AdWords. So we, want, we really want to make that integration really smooth, and it's one of the benefits of that GWD that you can work with all the double-click products. Um, so, you, so from Studio to AdWords, you can directly upload your creatives, which is a really nice feature. Um, you'll see, too, with things like file size, which has been a big question on HTML5, uh, GWD shows you both the raw file size and the compressed file size, and that's what will get served as a compressed. So that's a really key thing to note, um, because when you see the raw file size, a lot of um, users get worried that the file size is, is it's too big. But if you look at the compressed size, it's often much smaller. And then one more note, uh, the API for custom components is now in the Help Center. Uh, so you can really get in there and uh, do a lot more custom work. So a couple double-click updates. Uh, double-click bid manager is starting to target Flash away from Chrome. Um, this is an obvious an obvious move since Chrome won't be uh, serving or it'll be serving Flash, but it'll be pausing it. Uh, DBM and double-click campaign manager uh, and AdWords have auto conversion. 
we get a lot of questions about this because there's been some confusion. So we have Google has a tool called Swiffy, and uh, it's a technology to convert Flash to HTML5, but it won't convert everything. And the key to note here is that in, in any of the DoubleClick products or AdWords, the conversion actually needs to happen in that tool. So you can use Swiffy as a kind of temperature check to see if it'll convert, but when you actually want to you know, put your ad into one of the DoubleClick tools or AdWords, you need to upload it directly into those products you know, as a Flash file um, and, let, and let those tools do the conversion. Um, what this does is it gives you, uh, it'll either work, right, which is what we really want to do, and, and there's been a lot of great updates with that, or it'll give you error messages telling you what went wrong. And that can be really useful because sometimes it's as simple as going back into your Flash file and just making a few changes and then re-uploading it and allowing the conversion to happen. Or it you know, lets you know that you'll need to rebuild it in HTML5. So that's a, that's a question we've been getting a lot on. Uh, so hopefully that helps clear that up. Uh, we also have, uh, let me just jump down to double click for publishers. Uh, we can get any questions on that. Uh, we have a Help Center article and a one-sheeter that we just want to make people aware of. Um, so showing you the tools you can use for HTML5 and how to use that in conjunction with DFP. And as well as for um, trafficking HTML5 creatives mm -hmm. on the DFP side. Uh, so that's a great one-sheeter. It's linked in the presentation, so at the very end, uh, we'll give you guys a chance to provide some feedback, and then you'll be able to download the, the entire presentation. Yep, and DCM, so we have one more update there, enhanced banners. A lot of you might be familiar with this, but it's been a great uh, way to help transition to HTML5. Uh, a couple key features, one is free, so all DCM accounts are upgraded. Uh, it's unlimited file size, so even with optimization like, uh, like GWD does, sometimes the files are bigger, um, but with this format you can have unlimited file size. Note that the publisher still needs to accept the larger file size. So we'll get to the IAB specs um, in that in just a moment. Um, but just note that though, while we accept any file, uh, you might have to make sure that the publishers will accept the larger file size. So we still recommend adhering to uh, certain file specifications. Uh, you can actually also track multiple clicks as opposed to just one and have more files up to 100 and have a polite load, which are all nice features. Note, it's still not rich media, so if you want to do video or have some other functionalities, you'll still need to have it uh, set as rich media. So file size specs. This has probably been the biggest question we've gotten about HTML5. Uh, we've been working with the IB along with a number of other companies to uh, update them, and uh, they're taking public comments right now through September 17th. You can see their blog post up online. Uh, so please read through that if you want to see specifications for different files. Um, the biggest thing is just making file sizes larger. So for example, on a billboard ad, 970 by 250, uh, the recommendation is going to be 200 kilobytes initial load and one megabyte polite load. Uh, and this will really help um, kind of open up what you can do creatively with HTML5 ads. It's, uh, it's really been a big concern, and uh, it's nice to see this coming along. So we don't have specific dates, but it'll likely be sometime this fall that uh, that, that will get um, get more nailed down. But in the meantime, publishers are aware of where we've been working with them, as well as actually the whole industry, you know, helping educate and uh, move this along uh, at a quick speed because the switch is already happening, and uh, and we and to make that we really need everyone to update their specs. Uh, Let's move on. So double-click solutions. So we've been working hard to uh, build out all of all of the support we can offer uh, to help you guys move move to HTML5. Uh, you might be aware of some of these ones. Uh, so DCM and DBM auto conversion, along with uh, AdWords. One other note is that a lot of those creatives will actually be automatically converted um, if possible. So so there's a lot of work on the back end trying to do that automatically. We also have template database and studio layouts. Uh, those are great resources to create ads quickly, um, and those also we you know we, there were a lot of them in Flash, and so we've been moving them all over to HTML5. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of time because there's a lot of work to be done there, but um, but that's ongoing and uh, and something to keep an eye out for. Uh, GWD, if you want to go straight into HTML5, both using our templates uh, and the WYSIWYG editor but also to jump into the, you know, to hand code it. Um, and so that's something in one of our upcoming sessions we'll jump into uh, much deeper. 
And then Tech Lab Solutions, for anyone that doesn't know that, it's uh, they're great little code snippets that allow you to do a lot more with your ads. Um, everything from uh, scratch and snip, which is one of my favorite ones where you actually can, with your finger touch, you can scratch away a layer of the ad. Uh, and, and so there's just a lot of neat features there. Uh, the other side of what we've been doing is uh, training and offering certifications as well as building out our help center. We've had a lot of new uh, HTML5 uh, resources up there, so please uh, check that out. And as we mentioned, this deck has full of links, so all of the things in here we're mentioning are linked out. Uh, so once we give you guys the deck, um, you can use that as a resource. Uh, we've also been doing something called HTML5 Toolkit. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, designers and developers at Google who, uh, who work with ads and have, and have a lot of know-how. So what we've been trying to do is just gather that all and uh, give you guys ad-specific HTML5. Um, HTML5 has been around for quite a while in the web world, uh, as well as HTML4 and going on back. Um, but in terms of ads, it is a newer technology. And so we really wanted to customize it to what would be useful for creating ads. Um, so this is everything from um, double-click resources, uh, Google resources, and, and, and external ones that we think are you know, sort of the top of class, the best things that will help you build your ads. Um, and we walk through everything from file size to you know, optimizing your images, um, you know, using CSS, uh, JavaScript, pretty much everything you can think of we're trying to cover uh, that would be useful for building ads. Um, we have a template database, again, uh, that's on the Rich Media Gallery. And then we have uh, some new certifications. We have the HTML5 certification and a GWD one. Um, and those two together are a really nice pair for, um, for training yourselves in this new you know, tech landscape. Um, they, they're both useful as a learning tool and then also to be able to show uh, clients um, that you, what you've learned. Uh, Rich Media Gallery, uh, this is something that's been evolving. Uh, we have a lot of new HTML5 ads up there and this is where we'll be adding new everything from templates you know, to um, Tech Lab solutions. So please check this out. The toolkit, HTML5 toolkit also lives on here. And the last thing we want to note is uh, the certification uh, is something that we found really useful. Um, as I mentioned, you can learn a lot from it, but it's also something that uh, clients will look at both to find developers uh, and designers, but also uh, sometimes they've even required it that uh, or asked that you know advertising agencies do this so that they know that you're familiar with the, the double click products. Um, anyway, you cut it, it's just it's a nice resource and a nice thing to go through. So. That was our quick uh, kind of update on the industry. Uh, as we mentioned, we have a feedback form we'd love for you guys to go through and get this deck. Uh, as we mentioned, we've got a lot of other resources in here, another 30 slides full of, um, full of links, everything from optimizing images to um, file size to using libraries like jQuery or Zepto or all the different stuff out there, um, CSS animations. There's just a lot of stuff um, that we're not going to go through all today, but we wanted to, uh, you know, again, give you guys a resource for this. So let me end this presentation. Awesome. Cool. Hopefully, hopefully uh, we moved a little quickly through that, but we wanted to get through some demo time. And, uh, you know, please continue to write in questions, and then I'll hand it back over to you, Paul. All right. Let me share my screen. And... Hemi, if you can pin my screen. All right. Uh, so everyone should see my screen now. Um, so if you guys haven't used Google Web Designer, sorry about that. Um, it's it's obviously a great tool. Uh, it's really easy to use. So we just had uh, the 1.4 release. So that had a bunch of uh, new features, uh, including a bunch of new templates. So Sam mentioned a bunch of new AdWords templates. Um, and he, uh, he also mentioned that there's, um, so inside of AdWords, there's a bunch of uh, dynamic support now also built into Google Web Designer. So a lot of these templates uh, can tie into uh, feeds that are powered through AdWords and uh, through Google Merchant Center, for instance. Um, so you can, you can have dynamic content um, directly through uh, Google Web Designer in AdWords. Uh, there's also some new uh, features. So if we go directly into uh, build a new ad, um, you'll notice uh, some new options here. So under expandable, 
we now have the option um, for full screen. So this allows us to do tap to full screen. Um, there's also support for full screen light boxes. So you can create cross screen uh, light box creatives that run on desktop as well as mobile and tablet. Um, there's also support for uh, just a regular uh, full viewport um, banner size. So this will fill up the entire browser uh, with your content. So if we create a new expandable, and let's use the full screen. So I'm just going to ignore my expanded dimensions, um, again, because it's going to use a full screen API to actually unlock the div and uh, take up the entire, uh, the entire browser. So let's name this my expandable. And I'm going to save this to the desktop. OK, cool. So, so now, um, if, if you're not too familiar with, uh, with the interface here, so we have our, our panels on, on the right here. So we have our color panel, which uh, if you guys haven't used GWD recently, you'll notice it's a little bit different. Um, we've got some new features and options in there. Um, and then we have our properties panel, components. So this is where all of the, the cool stuff happens. Um, so we have like tap area components. So this allows you to, let's say you're building a standard banner or an enhanced banner for DCM. Um, you would use the tap area component just like, uh, you know, a rich media or a studio uh, creative, and you would actually uh, do a normal Google exit, uh, and that would be then uploadable to DCM. So you can actually use. Uh, Google Web Designer, not just for rich media stuff, but also for standard and enhanced format um, creatives. Uh, scrolling down the list here of components, uh, there's quite a few. So there's some gesture components. Uh, Sam mentioned this tap to call. Uh, so instead of just tap to call, we now provide the ability for tap to SMS. So if I were to drag this out on the stage, and let's just take a look at the properties, uh, you would give it a phone number and the action if it's uh, a tell prompt which would uh, trigger your, your phone dialer uh, application or if it's SMS it would, it would trigger your default SMS application on your phone. Uh, so that's a really cool feature um, all built into the component. Uh, we also have uh, galleries for uh, images or video um, as well as like YouTube components, uh, Google Maps components, uh, you, you also have the ability to add your own components and build your own components using custom elements. So all of these components are really just custom web components. Um, they're, they're, uh, they're using uh, polyfill uh, to provide cross-browser compatibility, um, but we do have a Help Center article on how to build your own Google Web Designer components. Uh, definitely check that out after this. Um, but I want to I want to start to build this ad, so let's let's add some assets here first. So going to Finder, I know I have a logo over here, um, and I'm opting to use the SVG. Um, if you guys have really played around with different file size and, and compression, this is my original logo, and uh, if you can tell, it's about 25k over here. Now, I, I ran that same PNG through TinyPNG, which is a website where you can uh, compress. Um, there's also command line versions to compress images down, uh, possibly a little bit more than Photoshop, say, for web. Uh, so I was able to get that down to 11K. Uh, but in reality, this is a vector logo. It, I should just use the vector version. That way I can scale and resize and, and do all that different stuff. Um, and, and the SVG version is only 3K. So just to, just to show you, you can drag and drop your uh, assets into Google Web Designer. Um, so I can take my logo. I can grab a car. Grab that car. It's got a nice reflection on it. Um, OK, cool. So let's start resizing stuff. So over here on my left, I have all my tool pane uh, options. And transform controls, I can quickly Control is, uh, if you hold down shift, it does both. Um, but it also scales in proportion, if you notice. As I drag stuff out, um, it's keeping its original form. So I can resize that, throw it over here on the left. 
uh, take my image, and I'm going to do some quick animation here. It's not going to look very pretty, but uh, let's let's just make something happen here. So I'm in the quick mode, uh, or I call it quick animation mode, where I can just add new scenes and create new animation. So between that first scene and this scene, I want the car to, uh, let's see, quickly zoom across. So it's not going to look very nice. Um, it's it's moving a long distance. Um, I can adjust the duration here. So instead of half a second, I can say let's do it one second, and let's have it ease in. So I can, uh, or sorry, ease. So it would ease in and ease out. Uh, so now if I play that back, cool. Still sliding over. Uh, might seem a little choppy over. Uh, over the Hangout, but um, if you're following along or trying to do this uh, on your local machine, you'll notice it's nice, buttery smooth uh, because we're using um, CSS uh, animations and transitions. So we're, we're animating the properties. It's GPU accelerate, uh, accelerated animation, um, and it'll play back really nice on your mobile device as well as your, your more powerful desktop. Um, OK, so I have that there. Let's add a few more states here. I'm going to fade it out. Oops, there we are. So um, as well as adjusting position, width, and height, I can also change uh, style properties. So I can set the opacity down to zero. Um, and everything I'm doing here is uh, available to see in our CSS panel or in the code view. Uh, so you can see that. Um, my element style now has an opacity property of zero. So this is really just standard CSS that we're, we're changing here. Um, you can see that it has a, an animation attached to it. Um, so now that I have that, I can add another state, silently move it over into its final place, and then add one more keyframe, and let's fade it in. So let's see how this looks. So it slides over fades out, and then it comes back in in the center and, and fades in. Uh, shoot, I didn't want that version of the car. Um, so one of the new features that we have is uh, swap image. So I have this lovely animation, or in my case, not so lovely. Um, but you can see that it's it's done a bit of uh, keyframe generation here. It has you know some ease and some fades. I don't have to redo that over and over. Um, so I'm going to right-click on it, and we have now this swap image uh, setting or option. Uh, so here I can swap it with another asset that's already included in my creative, or I can actually browse my local machine and uh, grab a new file. So I have another version. I have a bronze version. And I can just select that and click OK. And if I scrub back and forth, you can see that my entire animation is now on the bronze image. So that's really handy if you're you know, moving along and you create the entire ad and uh, they come back with uh, a revision, uh, an image revision, or some sort of asset change. Uh, so now you can quickly swap that out uh, instead of having to rebuild that animation uh, from scratch or manually swapping it out in the code view. All right, uh, so that looks good. Uh, let me reorder stuff so my expansion button is on top. So these are just like, uh, think of them like layers in, in Flash or, or Z indexes. Uh, the topmost is going to be obviously uh, what's clickable um, and then everything else behind it. Uh, so my, my expan expansion tap area, which was added by default when I created a new expandable creative, um, that has to be on top. Uh, and what that does is when we click on it, you'll see we have some events uh, listed over here. Uh, so our expand uh, button uh, has an action attached to it. And uh, that action is to go to a specific page, and in this case, our expand page. So our expand page, if we switch over down here, um, has its own timeline, has its own stage. Um, again, this size is really, um, this is just a, a, a default size that we have to give it. Um, but because we are using a full screen API, um, when we click to expand, we're actually going to get um, an entire uh, viewport full of our expansion. 
so if we quickly change the color and just preview this. All right. Uh, so now when I expand, our button, uh, or sorry, our creative goes uh, and fills up the entire um, area. Okay, let me switch over here to a different browser. Okay, let's preview that one more time. Cool. Card slides across, fades back in, and, and there we go. Um, you also notice by default there's a slightly different uh, shade of whatever that color is. Um, and when we hover over it, we get our mouse pointer. Um, so this is the close button that it gives us by default. Uh, but if you noticed, it was kind of stuck in the original position. Um, being as this is a full screen creative, I want this button to actually stay locked to the top right. So what I'm going to do is change the positioning of it to use our new percent based positioning. So uh, a quick, easy way to align stuff to top left, bottom right, um, top right, is to align container. Uh, so select what you want to be aligned. Uh, click fluid container. And then let's just use our transform our alignment controls up here on the top uh, to say stay to the very top and stay 100% to the left. So as I click those, you could see that um, instead of this left and top uh, being a pixel based, uh, we now have this percent based option. So now when I preview this, and I expand, now our close button is over here in the top right. So I can close that. Uh, this is pretty boring though, so let's add a gradient to our background, just to show you the, uh, the scaling here. Uh, so I just dragged out a new div uh, using our tag tool. And in the colors panel, the new colors panel, I'm going to add a gradient. And let's lighten this up a little bit. Let's make this a light gray. Um, you also see that it gives us RGBA values here. So I could always um, add some opacity if I wanted to adjust, uh, have some, some uh, transparency there. Uh, switching to our gradient tool, uh, we, we have the ability to edit our gradient here right on the stage, so I can, I can move where the gradient applies to. I can also rotate it, so I want this to rotate that way and scale down. All right, so that looks pretty good. Um, so let's preview real quick. And, oh. What we forgot to do was um, actually set percents on our new div. So I'm going to close, let's close out of these guys. Uh, okay, so now let's get rid of the color panel. And instead of width and height being a pixel based, I'm going to change it to a percent based uh, dimension. So now its width and its height is 100, 100. Uh, top left can stay at 0, 0. Uh, so now when we preview, car flies across, fades in. Uh, so now we get this nice or nicer gradient uh, colored background. So from here, we can actually start um, adding in other elements that we want to uh, position or stay positioned, maybe something centered on the page um, as like a main focal point. So what we can do is let's go to our components panel. Let's drag out a swipe gallery. Okay, here's our swipe gallery. Uh, let's resize it. Um, and let's add some images. So go to our properties pane, add some images. I think it has some cars here. Let's use these guys. All right, so I have seven images. I've added them here to my swipe gallery. Uh, but now I want to I make sure this swipe gallery stays centered. Um, so again, I, I have my fluid layout checked. Uh, so now it's as easy as uh, centering it horizontally and uh, vertically. So now, although it doesn't look like that did anything, um, it's actually positioning my uh, swipe gallery based on percents. So it's left 50% and top 50%. This also takes into account the registration point. Um, so obviously, it's going to it's going to stay 
true centered uh, depending on, the, on its size. So now if I preview, I click, and now our swipe gallery. Uh, if I actually resize this, you'll see that it stays nice and centered. Um, so that's horizontal, vertical centering, um, all through position-based uh, adjustments. Uh, a couple other updates I wanted to uh, quickly talk about. Uh, so when we when we talk about um, encapsulating uh, different content, so we have this new wrap feature, uh, and basically what that is is if I have uh, let's say a swipe gallery, but then I have some other uh, have some other images just kind of laying out here on the on the stage. So let's have that image here, that image here, and let's actually resize all of these. So I can select all of them, resize them all down, and let's keep them kind of all there together. So if I select all three of these images and I right click, I can create a wrap. And what a wrap allows me to do is um, it's basically like a container. So all of these are now contained in this container element. And a cool thing I can do is I can change this to be uh, percent based on the viewport. So if I want this to stay 100% width and 100%, oh, not 100% height. Let's change that back to the pixel. 250. Okay. Uh, so right now it seems a little, a little odd looking, uh, but let's preview this and see what happens. Um, okay, so our images are there. They're not moving around or anything. Uh, so let's actually position this using our uh, fluid layout. So we want to keep it centered, but let's keep it centered to the bottom. Uh, this is going to give us unintended consequences here, but let's see. <laughs> let's see what happens. Uh, cool. So it kind of shifted stuff around. Um, I think what's going on is I need to resize my width, not 113%, 100%. Still over there. Um, let's see what's going on here. Let's resize these down to actually fit inside of our container. Uh, and then what we can do is we can space these out within our container. Uh, so here we can say align to the, to the right, align to the middle, align to the left. Okay, so now wherever this is positioned, uh, I'm going to take off the percent base just for one sec. Uh, so now, no matter how I resize this, uh, because I have uh, the top or I have the right, center, and left positioning set up, uh, however big this wrap element is, uh, these elements will stay um, in the correct spot. So as I'm resizing that, you can tell you know, the, the right image is staying on the right. We're getting more space in the middle. So this is really handy for, let's say, like social icons or um, any elements that you want to keep uh, spread out um, at a similar distance based on, based on its parent um, size. So now if I were to preview this, uh, we wouldn't see any difference. So um, I'll call it at that for, for the wrap feature. Um, uh, and then just the same, I could always say, ah, oh, I didn't really want that. I can always break apart and uh, go back to uh, individually editing, editing uh, each of these images. Okay, so let's say my ad is complete. Um, it's awesome. Uh, one thing I do need to add is a exit. So let's add an exit here on top of everything else on our expanded page. Uh, again, you can choose to have it uh, fill up 100% of the width and the height. Uh, and right click, we can go ahead and add an event, so tap area. So you always want to use tap area, uh, touch click, 
Um, that allows it to simulate, um, or actually not simulate, but actually use touch events on mobile devices so you don't get uh, that annoying 300 millisecond delay uh, and in case you just have click events um, kind of sprinkled throughout. So touch, click, Google Ad, exit. So, so this is the same way I would make an exit for a standard DCM uh, banner. Um, for AdWords, I would also use the tap area component, um, as well as for Studio. So you want to you want to always make sure that you're using um, the Google Ad exit parameter uh, in order to uh, make sure that you get a uh, actual working exit, um, so that your creative is accepted in DCM when you upload it or into Studio. Um, you have to have that exit there. So we're just going to call this my exit. Google.com. Cool. And let's uh, let's just go ahead and straight publish this to Studio. So I can um, directly log into my Google account that's tied to, to Studio. Um, and that pulls up uh, a list of all of my um, advertisers. So I have a, a test account here. Uh, and that's the campaign I want to use. So I can call it my expand. My example creative. Uh, one other cool thing uh, that we added in this feature is um, this ad border is now not just tied to black or white. So now you can actually use a custom color. Um, you still want to make sure that it's contrasting so that the publisher won't uh, reject on it. Uh, but now you can actually um, pick whatever color that you want. Um, and then just to touch on this screen a little bit more, uh, I did see some questions, um, and I know we're going to go into questions here pretty soon. Um, I saw some questions on uh, the export size or how publishers are uh, calculating that size. So the, the zipped compressed uh, file is what publishers should actually be uh, looking at, and, and that's, that's sort of detailed right here. So our initial load size for this creative is 20K, and obviously we're looking at the compressed size here, and the total file size is 200K. So because this is a rich media creative, um, it will polite load itself uh, at 20K, and then once the page has finished loading, it will load the rest of the sub assets, uh, which account for 200K. So I, I threw a bunch of images in there. They probably weren't all optimized. Um, that's another good lesson to, to make sure you optimize all your images before you actually bring stuff into GWD. Um, uh, for, for right now, GWD will not, um, it's not going to do auto compression like Flash did. Uh, so you need to, to pre-compress everything and then bring it in. And just a note there, uh, in the deck we have, there's a lot of resources on what tools you can use to do that. Um, there's some ones like TinyPNG. There's there's a nice a bunch of nice resources out there that you can use to, to really get your file size down. Great. Um, okay, so everything looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and click publish, and see if I missed anything. Um, oh, one thing I missed. Uh, we do have a new event. Uh, it's kind of a cool event, um, but the uh, the page uh, event panel now has uh, tilt. So you can now listen for tilt events uh, using, uh, obviously, a mobile uh, or a tablet device uh, to trigger things happening in your creative. Um, so that's a really cool uh, little event there. Um, play around with it. I'm sure there's some really, really awesome use cases. You can think of stuff sliding back and forth uh, when, when they tilt. Uh, so um, I just wanted to call that out as well. Cool. So behind the scenes, our creative got uploaded. Uh, let's go ahead and refresh Studio. OK, here is my example creative. Uh, here's all the files. Um, you'll notice that the file size in here is obviously uncompressed, uh, so you don't really need to um, worry about that for using the latest enabler version. Uh, we have a couple components listed in here. Um, you also notice it recognized it, that we had the full screen API in there. Um, so that showed up uh, in, in the components panel here. Um, if you go to our events tab, 
We get our uh, the different events that we created. We also get the exit uh, that we created. And then when we preview, get our animation. And when we tap to expand, we get our, our nice full screen um, with our swipe gallery. And of course, our exit is over our swipe gallery, so we can swipe. Uh, so, but that's an easy change. Uh, you can obviously just go back, and uh, you can send this uh, down a few until your swipe gallery is above it. Um, so that's that's that. Uh, I think that was I think that was everything for GWD. Um, for for uh, standard DCM. Um, so if you're not building rich media. Um, obviously, you're building a standard creative or a standard banner. Um, you're still under double click here uh, for the environment, unless you're building for AdWords, then you choose AdWords. Uh, so under double click, um, you would create, you know, my DCM creative. Uh, there's nothing really else different about that creative. Again, when you're ready to, um, once you have all your elements in here and you're ready to create your your tap area or your um, your main exit. Drag out a tap area, uh, right click, add event, and just make sure you're choosing uh, Google Ad and then exit. Uh, so so this will get picked up by DCM uh, once you upload. Uh, and instead of obviously publishing uh, to Studio, you would just publish locally. Uh, this will create a, a zip file. Make sure, make sure you have your border check there. Um, you can see that our, our compressed size here is, is 12K uh, out of the box. Uh, with, with enhanced formats, that's not as, as big of a deal. And obviously, with, with the IAB coming out with new specifications, hopefully pretty soon, um, that should be uh, something that we don't have to worry about as much. Um, so that, that just created a, a zip file on my desktop. So my DCM creative, it created this zip file. So this is a zip. I would actually go over to uh, DCM and upload directly. Uh, same process for AdWords as well. Uh, I believe it's question time. Great. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. I will stop sharing. Cool. So we're back. Um, thank you for all the questions you've written in. Uh, we see our first one is asking on DFP um, Premium and HTML5 support. So uh, if DFP is working on HTML5 support, for most types, it should be well supported. Um, the kind of main formats they're seeing are third-party tags, um, double-click studio creatives, um, TCM campaign manager tags, and then self-contained HTML5 creatives. Uh, so this question is asking about HTML5 creative bundles. Uh, so this is something DFP is working on. Um, it, it's not; it can't accept it yet, but um, but do expect that to happen. Um, they're working, as we said, hard to you know adjust to all HTML5 and uh, provide solutions. Um, you can build a creative template and include the creative assets in that, and then adjust the creative snippet to refer to those hosted assets. Um, we also have a lot of resources we mentioned. Um, in the Help Center, and there's been some new resources and uh, some nice new one-pagers. So those are linked in our deck, um, and that's a good place to start if you have more questions on that. Um, just to, just to kind of runs through all the different specifications for DFP. Um, I know we have a couple questions in the list on DFP, so um, so that's a good place to start. And uh, and thank you for writing the questions. What you write in will help us uh, figure out what problems we need to address and and you know where the holes are. Cool. All right, so thank you, Carson. The next one is from Bruno. Um, uh, he's asking, is there a way to mask in GWD like Flash? Um, I think that's one of the holes right yeah. now. Um, we, def okay. we definitely get that question a lot, and uh, I, I think uh, one of the main reasons is just browser support. So there's not a, a sort of ubiquitous um, uh, way to do it across all browsers that's going to work. Uh, and work properly. So the GWD team is kind of waiting um, for that. I know they're working on the feature, and um, it's it's something that will come out eventually once it's a little more once the actual like spec is a little more mature. Um, but we do have a great help center article on uh, doing masking, so you can do it um, 
by hand. You can still do it within GWD. You just have to kind of jump over to the code view. Um, but it shows a lot of cool like animation techniques, um, how to how to use like border radius to uh, do masking, even mm -hmm. like feathered masks and stuff like that. It's it's definitely possible. Um, you'll probably just have to uh, do a little more work than than you had to in Flash, at least for right now. Yeah, I think that brings up an important point. Uh, so HTML5 is a developing technology, and uh, one of the things we run up against is, is not just what we can do on the product side, like what we can build into GWD, but what the browser industry and device industry, um, you know, what they're capable of handling. Uh, like Paul mentioned, that uh, some of the things we run up against is the browser support isn't uh, high enough. So some features like you might have found in Flash that aren't yet in HTML5, uh, what, we're, what we're waiting on is enough browser adoption for those features uh, to be able to include it. Um, there's some great websites out there, um, like caniuse.com and some other ones like that, that will show you um, what, are, what the browser support is for various different features in HTML5. And that's a great place to uh, look when you're, when you're trying to figure that out um, because unlike Flash, which was an encapsulated, um, you know, kind of add, there's a, there's, a lot, there's a bit more going on with HTML5. Um, so you're going to have to look like kind of feature by feature to see what's supported and how well it's supported. Um, and so when we're working on it in GWD, it often comes down to you know, what, what the browser support is. And, and we really look at, is there enough browser support to build it into the tool? Um, because we don't want people building things uh, and then expecting them to work and then finding out, well, actually, it only works in 30% you know, of browsers yeah. um, versus you know, a much higher percent. So that's really where the, the reasoning behind that and why GWD um, only offers certain features at the moment. Uh, but do expect that to change. Uh, and, and I know the browsers are all working on uh, evolving and, and helping move HTML5 forward. All right, thank you, Bruno. Our next question is, uh, this is from Flatland, will you support Adobe's Flash 8.5 Canvas more, um, including double-click components and other compatibilities? So that's that's a great question. Um, to be honest, I don't know of any plans right now of supporting components within uh, Flash's like HTML5 Canvas um, export. Um, that that definitely is something that could change, um, but I think for right now we're we're focusing on on Google Web Designer getting that um, as sort of a, a really good tool to to build in HTML5. Um, obviously, other other tools we support, you know, um, the upload of custom coded or Adobe Edge animate uh, creatives. Um, so we're we're not we're not obviously tying. Only uh, GWD ads can get mm -hmm. uploaded and, and run through, you know, double click. But um, I think there's um, we we have to kind of gauge and see how how much demand there is for um, for that specific feature and if we build components specifically yeah. for it. Yeah, and I, and I think too that uh, as Paul mentioned, we, like we want to be accept ads from no matter where they're created. Um, so there are some specific things with, say, like Studio Enabler or, you know, having them work within uh, DoubleClick or AdWords. So um, we'll be covering a lot of that actually in some of the further sessions uh, where we get into more advanced GWD, um, even dynamic and then hand-coded. Uh, so expect there's, there are a few kind of code snippets you can add in to make uh, to make an Adobe Edge you know, creative work or um, you know or from other sources. There, you know, it's very doable. There's just a little some some modifications you have to make. So we'll try to you know show what we can to help support that. Yeah, I mean, and I'll just add one thing. So um, we are sort of focusing on custom element components. So it's it's a matter of will will HTML will flashes uh, H5 Canvas export uh, custom element uh, components that anyone can build. Um, so if, if, we, if we build a component, um, obviously it's going to work in GWD. Um, the next question is also kind of uh, component-based. Um, so as long as the tool will accept a custom element component using basic HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, um, then, it, then it should work. Uh, yeah. Great. Thanks. Uh, so next question. How can we create tandem sync communicating banners and double click? Um, there's no uh, template currently available. Yeah, so that that is a, a gap that we have right now. Um, we're working hard to. Uh, we have a, a working prototype actually mm -hmm. for uh, a tandem sync 
um, type between two uh, HTML creatives. And it, it's a little more difficult because um, by default, HTML5 creatives are served uh, within iframes. So uh, you know, you're, you're talking about going out of your creative iframe onto the publisher page, looking for other iframes that contain your other creative. Uh, and you kind of have this nested iframe issue. Um, but we are working on a component. Um, I don't have timing uh, available quite yet. But uh, once we do have that component available, um, expect to see uh, like a GWD version, mm -hmm. um, as well as just a, a regular custom element version. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, we're working on that. Yeah, and too, as we as we find out these questions from you, you know, it helps us prioritize what we're working on also. So it's uh, it's really great to hear this feedback. All right, next question. Um, Flash uh, Creative Cloud now supports development and animation for an HTML5 Canvas. Mm -hmm. uh, what advice would you give us to use Flash Creative Cloud versus GWD um, to develop uh, creatives? That's a, that's a good question. So I mean. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that you shouldn't use Flash CC. I think it's obviously still a, a great tool um, now that mm -hmm. it can export to Canvas. Mm -hmm. um, you're not gonna get a lot of the benefits of Google Web Designer, um, especially if you are building rich media units. You're gonna want to use those components. You're gonna want to um, have direct upload. Um, so there's a lot of reasons why you should use GWD, but we're not obviously tying you to use that uh, as as the sole tool to build ads for for Google. Um, yeah, yeah GWD, GWD is uh, it's definitely kind of product agnostic. It's not uh, it's not tied into what we do, but we do want to make that workflow really smooth. So uh, what it what the nice feature is, it kind of provides an end to end solution if you are building ads with us. Um, that being said, uh, as Paul mentioned, Flash CC is, has a lot of great features, and a lot of people are very familiar with it. They've been using Flash or um, you know Adobe products for a long time, you know. So so we definitely want to make that um, workflow as easy as possible. Um, be our focus being on GWT, but definitely trying to accept um, ads uh, you know from any sources. So um, so that's something I'm. I think right now we don't have any specific recommendations beyond knowing that sometimes you have to add little code snippets to have it work, um, and we will be providing some of those snippets so that it's you know seamless transition for you. Um, we'll cover some of that in our, as I mentioned in our upcoming sessions, and then uh, you can also look to the help center for some of that too. Also, thanks, Kevin. And let's see, we only got a couple minutes left, um, so let's answer from Chase. Uh, he's asking if there are any plans to support file asset import from Illustrator. Um, this was a favorite feature in Flash uh, that you could import assets to the stage and start animating right away. That's a great question. So, so I'm assuming it's uh, importing uh, from Illustrator into GWD. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, for stuff like this, um, I think it's definitely like workflow-wise, it makes sense. It's efficient. Um, what I would suggest, um, and I don't know of, of uh, this specific feature um, sort of being prioritized or anything like that, but I would definitely go. Um, we have a GWD uh, help center and actually a, a forum that a Google forum that uh, the developer or sorry the the engineers actually working on the tool and the features and within the product um, are on there every day. So what I would do is I would I would search around, see, I'm sure this question um, or feature has been asked before. I would just kind of like add in your your two cents about it, uh, kind of upvote it, because the the more priority or the more people that want it, um, you know, we're obviously going to to focus on those features first. Um, so if there is anything missing, uh, in GWD that you you're kind of like oh this is how I this is essential in my workflow it would make so much sense if GWD was able to import directly mm -hmm. um, then yeah then I think that's that's definitely a good feature uh, to have but I would I would kind of like speak your voice on the on the GWD forum um, yeah so we only have a minute left so let me try to answer a couple questions uh, quickly uh, Katrina asks uh, is there a page where we can re review the requirements for auto conversion um, we don't have that right now. It's it's kind of a continually evolving process where we're making changes really quickly. Um, it's a great question, and um, we can uh, we can look into it and see if we can provide what, what specifications we can provide. Um, just knowing it's a moving landscape. Uh, so thanks for that question. Um, there's another question from Karsten on file weight. Um, Ivy is taking recommendations on standards right now, so that's a, that's a good place to start for that. Um, it's a great question on how to how do you um, have some matching for these different multi-screen campaigns. 
Um, and then the last one from Joey on plans for adding blend modes, like in Photoshop and Flash. I don't know if you can speak to that at all, Paul. Um, I definitely think it's it's on the roadmap. I'm, I just I don't have a, a time frame uh, for for blend modes, but I know that I know the team is uh, definitely thinking about those. Um, and then, really quick, just one last. Uh, there was one about a CDN hosting of uh, shared libraries. So we're working with IAB. Um, we're trying to get support, uh, or at least get buy-in from them to say if these external JavaScript libraries are coming from a, a single CDN source, uh, whether that's Google hosted or mm -hmm. hosted somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Uh, whether or not that would count towards file size. Um, we don't have an answer yet. Hopefully, we'll get that with the HTML5 specs. Mm -hmm. um, but we're, we're definitely aware of that and, and trying to, we're on your side. We're trying to, we're trying to get that uh, a re as a reality. So, yeah. Great. All right, well, we're at time. Uh, really thank you all for joining us. Uh, tune in to our next sessions. Uh, we've got a lot of great content coming up. Uh, we'll continue with the open Q&A, and we'll also be adding these questions to our help center so we can provide you guys answers. So um, please check back with that. And one last note, fill out our feedback form, and we can share our deck with all the resources and links in that. So thanks again, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye.